Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video on the official MTG Arena channel. Today we're taking a look at Life Gain Angels, which got quite a few upgrades in the latest expansion, including a Lightning Helix, a nice two-mana removal spell dealing three damage and gaining three life, so that can be a nice tool against aggressive decks to kind of pad our life total early on, but by gaining life we can also maybe help enable a Resplendent Angel. I'm playing the M19 version, you could also play the Ixalan one. The upside of the M19 version is that it actually comes with an animation, so that's pretty nice. And then we get a 3-3 flyer, saying at the beginning of each end step, if you gained 5 or more life this turn, create a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying and vigilance, and we can potentially enable the resplendent angel with its own activated ability for 6 mana, giving it plus 2 plus 2 and a lifelink until end of turn, so we can attack with a 5 power lifelinker, and then end of turn make an angel token. But now with cards like lightning helix, we can also potentially enable resplendent angel earlier in the game, especially when paired with other life lifelinking creatures, like maybe a Steel Seraph, which can give one of our creatures lifelink until end of turn. You can also choose Vigilance if we're trying to play around an opposing Wandering Emperor, for instance, and then as an artifact creature, it doesn't die to go for the throat, so that's another upside. And in the late game we can play it as a 6 mana 5-4 as opposed to a 3 mana 3-3. Three three. Then another new angel is Aurelia's Vindicator, can be played as a 4 mana 4-2 with Flying, a Life Link, and Ward 2, so not that easy for decks to interact with early in the game. And then we also have the flexibility of maybe disguising the Vindicator first as a face down 2-2 two -two with a Ward 2 for 3 mana, and then we can turn it face up by paying its disguise cost X, 3 and a white, and when the Vindicator is turned face up we get to exile up to X other target creatures from the battlefield and or creatures from the graveyards, and when the Vindicator leaves the battlefield, we get to return all the exiled cards to their owner's hands. So that's a very versatile effect. We can exile creatures from our own graveyard, so we can eventually get them back in our hand if the Vindicator leaves. We can exile creatures from the opponent's battlefield to get them out of the way temporarily. We can even exile creatures from our own battlefield if we expect Vindicator to die, so we can eventually get them back. So there are a lot of decisions to be made when disguising Vindicator, but as a 4-power flying lifelinking angel, it's already pretty good. And then another new angel is Aurelia, 5 mana, 4-4 four, four, with Flying, Vigilance, and Haste, saying whenever any player attacks with 3 or more creatures we get to draw a card, and whenever any player attacks with 5 or more creatures we get to deal 3 to each opponent and we gain 3 life, so this will also trigger off opposing creatures attacking, which can be quite relevant when facing some of those go-wide aggro decks, but on occasion we can also attack with 3 angels and draw a card, so Aurelia has been pretty useful. So those are some of the new additions. Now, as you'll notice, we're also playing four copies of Temporary Lockdown, which is not a card you would necessarily expect to see in an Angel life gain deck, but this has proven to be quite useful, especially in the best of one meta, which is dominated by low-curve aggressive decks like Mono Red Aggro, and especially the Red-White Convoke deck can be quite susceptible to Lockdown, exiling most of their permanents. So I've been pretty happy with four copies, even though it can be weak against control decks, and then it's going to be mostly a one sided sweeper, even though on occasion it might exile a token from Resplendent Angel or maybe our own Jada, but if we have both in our opening hand we can just not play Jada on turn 2 and wait until after we deploy the lockdown, but otherwise Jada can be another huge payoff for this Angel deck, giving us extra mana to cast our Angel spells, as well as giving us more plus 1 counters. And then we also have a Get Lost as another 2 mana removal spell, can deal with creatures, enchantments and planeswalkers, even though it will give the opponent some map tokens in return. Although Get Lost also synergizes quite well with our temporary lockdown, since we can maybe exile those map tokens that we just gave our opponent. And then rounding out the deck, we've got four copies of Archangel of Wrath, another very useful tool against aggro, as a 3-4 flying lifelink that we can also kick for both a black and or a red, so that's why you see Shattered Sanctum in the mana base, although Cavern of Souls naming Angel not only makes our angels uncounterable, but can also fix our colors for a card like Archangel of Wrath's kicker ability, and then we get to deal additional damage when it enters the battlefield, which will also gain us life, so this can also maybe set up our Resplendent Angel. And finally, two copies of Inspiring Overseer to one flyer that gains a life and draws a card. So that one life gain in combination with maybe an attack from Aurelius Vindicator can also enable our Resplendent Angel early on. 
And then a mana base, as we mentioned, has four Cavern of Souls, another very useful tool against counter spells. And then we've got two copies of the Restless Bivouac as a creature land. The plus one counter it provides can also maybe be put on one of our angels, so we can gain more life and enable the Resplendent Angel. And then a bunch more red-white dual lands, so we can enable an early Lightning Helix. And we also need double white to cast Lockdown, so I would like to have at least 18 white sources to cast it, and Cavern doesn't help with it, so that's why we see dual lands as opposed to a card like the Courtyard, which could otherwise name Angel as well, but it doesn't help us cast Lockdown. So that's why I prefer the actual dual lands. And then Iganjo and uh, Sokanzan can also offer a bit more utility. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw and we've got a decent hand against Aggro with Lockdown and Get Lost. Just hoping to find more ways to enable Resplendent Angel. Turn one Warden, so yeah, Lockdown is looking promising. We may not want to play Jada if our plan is to Lockdown on three. For now, main phase reinforcement, so they can enable the Warden's ability. So we'll just pass with Get Lost available. There's a chance we get lost to Warden. We'll see if they maybe can convoke out a Knight Errant, which we can maybe get lost, and then we can uh, lock down the rest. I think that's reasonable. So they have five creatures, but they might just want to use the Warden's ability. Okay, so now I have to decide if we want to get lost to Warden just to soak up some damage. I think we're fine to take the hits and then next turn lockdown. And then we can follow up with maybe Jada first, plus a get lost, and then Resplendent Angel will enter with a plus one counter. Okay, War Leader's Call, we can also get lost, so that lines up well. Although giving them two tokens can be kind of a drawback if they have another Warden. But for now we can pass, see if we want to get lost uh, War Leader's Call in response to a creature. Evangelist, yeah, I guess we'll get lost the War Leader's Call. So we don't take any damage, although they will be able to explore now. And a Warden, so yeah, that's a good one with those two tokens. Might end up uh, being larger than some of our Angels, but there's another one. Okay. So play Resplendent times two. We can attack first. And then next turn we could activate Resplendent Angel's ability as well. And uh, make two tokens, which should be good enough here. Okay, opponent found the Knight Errant. But is it too little too late? Bunnycorn can be quite large here. But it doesn't fly. So yeah, we can activate Resplendent Angel. Activate the bigger one for more life gain. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, we're missing a couple of lanes. But uh, Jada can also help cast our three mana angels, so I'll give it a try. Not sure yet if we're gonna need lockdown early, which is maybe a reason to hold back Jada. Alright, turn one duress, so I guess, takes away our lockdown. So, we get to play Jada. Kind of a controlling or mid rangey black deck could be a tough matchup if they've got a lot of removal. But it looks like we get to play our Angel here. Could make it Archangel, could make it Steel Seraph. I guess I don't mind uh, Archangel of Wrath, especially if they end up removing Jada. At least we'll have a large angel on the battlefield already, and then we can still follow up with Steel Seraph. Path of Peril destroys Jada. 
Okay. Don't have any useful ability to give the Archangel other than Vigilance. And then maybe next turn attack with Aurelia and draw a card. For mana for Shieldred, that we don't mind. So I could get lost now, but I don't mind taking two damage to see if we draw land. And then and now we can get lost. Steel Seraph gains a lifelink. Opponent's down to seven. But there are some five mana sweepers in standard. It's gonna be a deepest betrayal instead. Okay, so now just attack with Archangel, and if they take it, we can finish them off with Lightning Helix. Opponent takes it, doesn't want to chump, understandably. And Lightning Helix for the win. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a pretty angel light hand. Just Jada double helix. So it's not bad against aggro as soon as we draw another angel. I'll try it. Against a more controlling deck, this hand's pretty weak since we only have one threat. Turn one island to Ginger Brute, so an aggressive mono blue artifact deck perhaps. So turn to Jada, and then Cavern can make Steel Surf uncounterable as well. For now a Schooner. That's fine. Okay, so we have options. Question is, how do we want to sequence our three mana angels? So I think the plan is to get a lifelink hidden with Steel Surf and Lightning Helix in the same turn to enable Resplendent Angel. So then I may as well just play the Steel Surf now to give Jada a lifelink. And then next turn we should be able to both Play Resplendent Angel and Helix, thanks to the mana from Jada. Our opponent will need some bounce spells, and there's Fading Hope. Okay, so that's gonna slow down our plan. And a Surge Engine, good target for Lightning Helix. Schooner does get to attack. And our opponent appears to be blue-green, just missing the green. And get lost could be an answer to the Schooner as well. But uh, yeah, we have options. So I don't mind Lightning Helix on Surge Engine, attack, play Steel Surf. And then next turn we can potentially set up the same play. Our opponent with a Larcenist to answer Steel Surf. Now, interestingly, Larsenus just turns our creature into a treasure, it doesn't exile it. Otherwise, if we answer Larsenus, we could have maybe gotten the 6-mana Steel Seraph, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen here. Now, it does have Ward 1, so we will need another land to really go off next turn. Alright, we found it. So now, let's say we Lightning Helix pay the Ward. Then we get our Steel Serve back. Jada gains Life Link, and then we still get to play Resplendent Angel. So that's the plan. That works. So first we want to attack. I guess Steel Serve itself can gain life, since it doesn't have summoning sickness.
and play Resplendent. We've gained 7 life, so that makes a token. And they all get plus 1 counters from Jada, and that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, we've got a Keeper, I think. Just need to draw a couple more lanes, but Janna can also help out if it survives. If we're up against a Hyper Aggro deck, we may need Lockdown, which can be a little awkward with Jada, of course, and we are up against Moderate Aggro. Now Jada's also likely to just eat a Burn spell, so I might still play it on turn 2. And then if it survives, great, so we get to maybe make a bigger Resplendent Angel. Or a Vindicator, even. Since against Monorads, we usually run out of time to deploy our entire hand. So whatever we can do to affect the board early is probably worth it. And there's another lockdown. So yeah. If Jada survives, we get a 5-powered Vindicator. And looks like it. Make sure to get our 2 damage in first. And then at 3 toughness, with Ward 2, Vindicator's not that easy to kill for the opponents. And now at 5 power lifelink, it can also set up our Resplendent Angel nicely. Looks like they do have Land Lightning Strike here, exactly. That's unfortunate. So that's the one way they have of removing Vindicator. I guess um, Witch Stalker Frenzy could have done it too. So we're down to four. So how do we plan to stabilize? If Jada survives, it can enable a two-mana Iganjo. So let's say we attack. I have to play Overseer, tapping Jada, which will gain a life, and then keep up a 2-mana Ganjo to answer Godric. Another Swiss Spear. All out attack. I think I block Swiss Spear, since it doesn't actually trade for Overseer. And then Lockdown can exile the Wicked Roll, so it doesn't even trigger. Alright. Put him maybe on empty. Okay, excellent. So I can first attack. And then play Resplendent with Jada. And then Lockdown. We lose Jada, but our opponent loses everything. And then next turn we can activate Resplendent to gain 7. And hopefully get out of burn range. Swiss Spear's fine. So yeah, this ended up being pretty close. The Lightning Strike for our Vindicator was a pretty nice answer. But uh, yeah, Resplendent Angel gets it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is uh, a little bit unexciting, to be fair, but uh, it seems functional. Planes in two. Case of the Uneaten Feast, so a life gain deck. Alright. Let's see if we can gain some life ourselves to enable Resplendent Angel. For now, Amalia, definitely a must answer. Although Lockdown could be kind of a more elegant solution. And for now, play Bivouac. So hoping they play more cheap permanents that we get to exile. The veteran is one of them. Now they will gain some value of Amalia first. And a Voice of the Blast, okay. And a veteran, good to put in the graveyard as well, but Pono keeps it on top. Yeah, this uh, temporary lockdown gonna be quite strong. Opponent did eventually put the veteran in the graveyard. So 
Your opponent has two unknowns in hand. And gets back Phantom. And Jada could maybe help grow our creatures. Or we can just go for Inspiring Overseer and then next turn double spell Jada and Resplendent. did have a poisoner, so yeah, if we can flush out their removal first, that would be nice. It's gonna be Amalia. So yeah, with the food token, they can potentially gain three and then play poisoner, which would be enough to take out Jada or a 3-3 resplendent, so making it a 4-4 could be relevant. I'll take the one. And our opponent passes. Vindicator the draw. So if I were to disguise this, it has ward 2, so then it's going to be pretty tricky for the opponent to take out with a poisoner. And then we would still have get lost available. Yeah, that's not a bad sequence. And then I may as well attack, since I'm not planning to block with Overseer. Alright, Shieldred, so that one's definitely worth taking out. And our opponent will get some map tokens, which will certainly come in handy. Amalia hits another land. Okay, so now what we want to do... Could disguise the Vindicator. And then potentially pick up an Overseer so that if they answer it we get it back in hand. As well as uh, exiling Amalia for the time being. But our opponent will be able to sack a food, play Poisoner and pay the ward. So that's enough to take out Vindicator next turn. So maybe we want to uh, play it slow. Yeah, if I wait another turn we can maybe Disguise this and then also get an angel token from Resplendent Angel. So let's just hit for two with Overseer and then pass a turn. And then we can disguise this at instant speed. Our opponent does go exploring, so now they may not have the mana to set up the Gumdrop Poisoner. They will sack the food now. Okay, that's fine. So... Their plan is Poisoner, get rid of the Overseer, maybe. Question is whether we want to transform this to prevent the Amalia trigger. I don't think so. We want a Virtual Persistence, maybe a good target for Get Lost. So there's Poisoner. And then in response, X equals 2. And we can hit Overseer and Amalia. Since it blocks the uh, bivouac. If 
Phantom attacks, so I'll happily take it. So I think now the plan is animate bivouac, so we can put a counter on Vindicator, so we actually gain five. I guess alternatively I could make it so Resplendent Angel picks up a plus one counter. So it doesn't die to the Virtue Persistence, although they might be trying to take out Vindicator anyways. I think I'm fine getting one token here. Our opponent trades. But importantly, we gain 5 life. Which makes us an Angel token. So now they have to decide between Vindicator and Resplendent Angel with this virtue. Opponent's just gonna hard cast the 7 mana enchantment, fair enough. So that we can also get lost. And then don't really want to lock down our own token. So for now, could play Jada. Attack. Could have also opted to pump Resplendent Angel, but we gain five anyway. And then end of turn our token. We'll get a bunch of extra plus one counters. I need to get lost to virtue now. Yeah, maybe it was still worth it to just wait on Jada, play the lockdown to get rid of those map tokens, and then one angel token, and then we would have been able to play Jada afterwards. But I guess it's also not a bad idea to have a lockdown left in case something goes horribly wrong. Gix's command just answers our angel token, gets back Poisoner and Shieldred. So if they play Poisoner, it still doesn't take out Jada, since they would only gain one life. And another Gix's command on top. But yeah, opponent's just too far behind. Next turn we get to attack for lethal. Awesome, so nice back and forth here against a life gain deck. And once again got to see the importance of temporary lockdown in the current best of one meta. So don't leave home without it. And yeah, if you're looking for a life gain deck that goes maybe a little bit bigger than the black-white life gain deck, then maybe Angels could be the deck for you. Now of course we're gonna struggle a bit more against the more controlling decks in the meta, since cards like temporary lockdown aren't particularly effective against them, and the opponent can easily clear our board with a few sweepers or spot removal, so those matchups are going to be tough, so that's where you might want to pivot after sideboard with a more low to the ground approach, or maybe introduce more planeswalkers that might be harder for the opponent to interact with. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!